in my perfect world, I will sew my trousers myself. I will grow my coffee bean and my cocoa in my backyard, process it and have my chocolate. Uh, but for our industrialized mass population, we can't afford to do that now. So we must rely on production from poorer regions we call developing countries. Now let's make that sound better, emerging markets. But between you and the person producing your pair of trousers, there are lots of people that need to earn money. Now, actually, that pair of trousers becomes like 20 times, more than 20 times, the price earned by the person making it. Let's take, for example, Selma. Selma is a single mother in Bangladesh. She is uh, one of the over 4 million tailors in Bangladesh, living below $2 every day. So if people earn that little for their manpower-related jobs, they will want to leave their communities. So for Selma, she's very ambitious and she's like, I need a better job, I need a future for my daughter. So the only option that seems to be there for her is to go somewhere else where she'll get a better job, maybe come to Vienna. But she needs to find her way here, so she will save some money and pay a smuggler to bring her over here. But in case she doesn't have enough money, she will look for somebody to pay for that trip, to sponsor that trip, with the hope that when she comes to Vienna, she's going to get a job and she's going to pay back that money. But unfortunately, she could get exploited in Vienna, and this becomes a cycle of debt bondage, and that's where human trafficking happens. And 800,000 people right now in Europe are living in debt bondage. They are victims of human trafficking. In the past 10 years, I have spent my time sharing the stories of these victims, talking about the failure of our government to protect these victims, also talking about the increasing demand of cheap labor and sex. But human trafficking is more than that. It's about us. It's got something to do with us. So let me break it down. If people in their homes cannot feed, they can't see a future, they can't send their kids to school, they will leave. We've seen it happen. Between 2004 and 2014, 22,400 people have lost their lives on the Mediterranean Sea, wanting to come to Europe. And right now, two million people are waiting, ready to risk it all, just in search of a better life. So why are we pushing people to live it all, to risk it all, to come here because of our unsustainable consumption? So let's go back to the pair of trousers. Well, who can sew a pair of trousers? My God. Thank you. <laughs> okay, who owns a pair of trousers? Okay, you see? So we love to consume so much that actually the apparel and textile industry is now making 2% of the world's GDP and generating over a trillion dollars on a global scale yearly. So there is money out there. But money out there is not probably available for exactly for the people making our trousers. So the question is, how do we restructure the global retail to actually give people who are sitting down and sewing our clothes more income? Okay, there is a simple solution, but before I go to this simple solution, let's actually take a look at how the global retail is. So, we want to get the pair of trousers in our wardrobe, so we need raw materials and processing 250 euros. Selma needs to sew it, so she's going to get 50 cents for sewing it, so we're on the 3 euros. Then, of course, we've got gadgets and finishing for the trousers that we need to import and, and you know, handle the shipping, so we're adding 4 euros to it, and we've got the trousers now for 7 euros. Then, of course, for the production, you need to pay the workers the rent, so their overheads, classic of 30%, and we have the trousers for 9 euros, 10 cents. Of course, we need to import it to Vienna. We need to pay customs and duties. And now we have the trousers for 12 euros, 74 cents. And remember how much Selma has, she's got 50 cents. And now the trousers is not in your wardrobe. And you don't even know Selma, she doesn't know you. So we need to bring those trousers to your wardrobe. So there are people in between, 
agents, wholesalers, retailers, they're going to get that trouser to your wardrobe and they need to earn money. So imagine it's a Saturday and you're going to go out and uh, you go into your wardrobe, you've got lots of trousers, but you need something fresh, you know, to impress. Then you go to a store, you don't really know what to buy, but you breathe in that exotic scent, the room freshener. You stare at the attendants, well-cultured and dressed, the lights, the nice towels on the ground. Then you stare at the picture of an A-list celebrity on the runway in the picture wearing that trouser, and you're like, I need to buy it. So, to get this shop experience, the retailers, they need to add some money to it. So when you are the wholesalers, the retailers, the agents in between, it's classically times four. So the 12 euros 70 cent now becomes 50 euros. Okay, our government needs to earn some money, you know, sales tax to keep the economy going. So now you're ready to buy that trouser for 60 euros. Don't forget how much Selma is earning. Well, we might say, uh, well, she's not going to make just one trouser a day, isn't she? Yeah. So she could make six trousers a day. So she's going to get three euros. Then we might say, well, she lives in Bangladesh or Nigeria or Ethiopia, so three euros a day is pretty much above the classic uh, poverty line of two dollars a day, so she will cope. Okay, let's see how she's going to cope. Selma has three euros, and she's going to be like, no, I don't like light, I don't like water, I don't like heat, I, I really don't like these things, because it's costing us about two, three dollars every day for that hair. So she says no to that. Then she's like, um, I'm not going to pay running costs for my apartment. We pay $5 a day here. So she says no to that. Then she doesn't need to pay rent because she's going to live with her grandma. And her grandma is going to take care of her child while she's at work. So she's not paying for childcare. And <laughs> she doesn't need to think about sending her child to a good school. Because, well, when the child turns 12, the child will start working in the same factory Selma is working. So, well, if we look at these compromises she makes, she may manage with three euros a day. The option is to maybe just go local. Let's shop only things made in Austria. No, actually, let's really go radical and shop things made on the Dono Insel. But we can make that trouser here, but what about the raw materials behind that? What about the organic cotton we really love? I don't know, I don't think they grow here. What about the minerals, the diesel, the fuel? What about the minerals in our electronic gadgets? So somehow we're dependent on one another on the globe. So we can try to live local, but we need other people to keep our structure functioning. So because we are a part of this global village, we've got responsibilities. And we've got responsibilities to make sure that everyone on the globe and an equal income. I'm not talking about fair income, I'm talking about equal income. So let's go now to the options we have. First of all, we could actually sew our trousers. It's not going to be difficult, it's just going to be like 100 hours from our summer holiday. Well, it depends on how many trousers you want. The second option is we are super busy working any more money, so we are ready to pay 30 euros more. So we're not going to buy for 60, we're going to buy for 90, so that we know that Selma we get 4 euros more. Well, there's another option, which is a third option, where we could think about going the extra mile to buy directly from Selma. We could think about taking the pain to know who's producing our product, what are they in and where, how. Well, there is a fourth option, actually, which will be we won't wear clothes, we will not eat chocolate and we will not drink coffee. I think that's very challenging for me, so we will stick to the child option. What if you had the power to restructure the cash flow in the retail industry to make sure that people actually sitting behind the machines and making our clothes really earn enough money? I know it could be very challenging in the fashion industry, especially everyday fashion, but there are companies out there who've developed platforms for you to buy directly from people producing.
And we at Joadri, we are specifically now working with people in human trafficking regions, bringing it directly to you as a global consumer. So it's all our responsibility to stop prevent human trafficking from happening. It's Selma's responsibility to get aware, to demand her rights. It's the government's responsibility, of course, to create an equal global economic situation and a more victim-oriented legislation. It's the judiciary's responsibility to actually prosecute human traffickers. But it's also our responsibility as global consumers to slow down, take a deep breath, give fast fashion a break, and go the extra mile and actually buy from people actually producing the product. Because if we do that, we will give them equal valued income. We will give them equal valued job. We will connect with them. Actually, we will build the producer to consumer connection and friendship. And we will be able to give Selma the power to ignore luring premises from human traffickers. Thank you.